Hello, I'm Ryan Gerber, Hunter Product Specialist here at Hunter Engineering. Today we're going to cover some basic operational procedures with Hunter's new Ultimate ADAS. Hunter's Ultimate ADAS is based off of Hunter's Win Align system. Many of you are going to be very familiar with the operation. We can still do wheel alignments, but now we've added the capability of adding ADAS target placement all around the vehicle. So let's start with how do we begin? So the first thing that we need to do is power on our sensors. What we'll do is we'll open the cabinet door on the sensor tower on this side, simply press the button on the power supply for a moment. You will see that it comes on and you can verify with the green light on the PC that it's on. In just a moment, the sensor tower will pair with the console and the display will come on. Once the sensor tower and console are powered up, the laser gimbals will go through a series of movements to initialize. Give it just a moment before continuing. At this point, you'll see some very familiar screens. Here we'll begin alignment just like we would with any of Hunter's WinAlign software. I'll begin the alignment, and if I were going to do just a standard wheel alignment with no ADAS procedures, I could continue by picking a vehicle. However, for today's procedure, we're going to do ADAS procedures. To initiate an ADAS procedure, we'll need a VIN. I'm going to use the barcode scanner to capture that VIN and move forward. Once the VIN is entered, you'll have a screen here to make sure that we want to do that ADAS procedure. So I will enable that ADAS procedure and I will continue without an alignment. We could continue with an alignment if that were part of our procedure. At this point, we need to mount our wheel targets. You will notice a new icon here on the bottom. Hunter's Ultimate ADAS program has opened. You will also see the win align icon is present. Ultimate ADAS will automatically switch to the correct program for seamless operation. Should you need to manually toggle between the programs, it's as simple as clicking on the icon. To progress, we will need to add a qualifier here. We need to know if this is a four-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive. I'll choose the appropriate four-wheel drive model for this process. With this screen, we will choose what ADAS calibrations we need to do. We can either check those individually or drop down one row on the menu and select all. Returning to the top menu and confirming those calibrations. Now we're ready to compensate the vehicle. Once the vehicle is compensated, be sure to chalk the wheels so the vehicle doesn't move at any time during the procedures. Now that we've returned to the start calibration screen, let's talk about an important thing that we would want to do. Every morning, you will be prompted to do an ADAS gimbal calibration check. Let's go ahead and walk through that so you're familiar with it. Dropping down one row of keys, you'll see a calibration check Simply click that. Our first step is determining home position. Take note of the camera beam and floor plane on screen graphics. These will go through a progression from red to yellow to green as wheel targets are acquired and floor plane is calculated. You may see this progression at different times when moving the sensor tower or blocking camera sight. Should this happen, allow the system to reacquire target vision and recalculate the floor plane to green before continuing. Regarding home position, always follow the on-screen instructions and graphics to ensure that you're in the proper location. Ultimate ADAS will go to its calibration check height. It will instruct you to mount the targets that we've already mounted, and we will now do the calibration check. This is where the red lasers will come out and point at the front wheel targets on the top and the bottom and make a measurement. If the cameras and gimbals are in agreement, then you will get a pass on the screen and you can continue on. Let's talk about the accessories that will come with your Ultimate ADAS. Different manufacturers will require different accessories but let's cover all of the bases. The first thing that everyone will have is this handheld remote. The handheld remote 
will control the console remotely so you don't have to walk up and engage with it. The next thing that all of you will have will be this barcode scanner. The barcode scanner will record different QR codes from some of these accessories for the printout and so that we know you use the correct target in the correct place. Everyone will also have a target rail and target carriages. On those carriages, we will have the target boards that mount to them. Then on the target boards, we will actually have those forward-facing camera targets or artwork. If you note on the end of each one of these scrolls, you will see a number. That number will correspond to the on-screen graphics. Also, we have this flat plate radar as well as surround view mats. Surround view mats may be rolled together because there may be more than one mat for a procedure. Again, you will see a number that will match an on-screen graphic as well as QR codes that we will use for our barcode scanner for recording of the correct mat in the correct place. Last but not least, let's talk about the remote stand. The remote stand top will actually move so that you can aim that at the direction that the laser is pointing. The next thing you'll see here is the brake. So the brake will allow this, the remote stand to be placed level to the vehicle. Also, we need to adjust height. There's a trigger here. Pulling that trigger will allow for that height to be adjusted on the remote stand. You'll notice the remote stand has a receptacle on the front, and you may, depending on OE, have different accessories that will attach to this receptacle. Simply clip those in and continue on. Now let's look at the base of the remote stand. The first thing we want to point out is the bullseye. The bullseye is for the red dot laser. This allows for spot on placement. Next, we'll have a red line. The red line is to line up with the green line laser that will appear on the floor. Next, you will see these four pegs. You may have a procedure where the bottom of a target will need to be put between these pegs for stability. Now that we've covered the basic accessories, let's go ahead and move on to a procedure. In this video, we're going to go through a front-facing camera procedure. We already have it highlighted here. We'll go ahead and start this calibration procedure. First thing that we're going to do is it's going to ask for home position. Always follow the on-screen instructions and graphics to ensure that you're in the proper location. You'll know this because the targets will go green on the wheels. Once we have both targets on an axle, we can proceed. The next will light up green. K4 will correspond and continue. Now what we're going to check for is free space to see if we actually have enough room to complete the calibration. Simply look at the graphic on the screen and imagine green lines connecting the red dots to make a square in front of the car to define free space. Now that we have defined our clear space, we need to check clear space for ultimate ADAS sensor tower. What's going to happen in this step is the red dot lasers are going to shine on the floor approximately where the ADAS sensor tower is going to go. We can now look at the floor and see that we have enough space to roll the ultimate ADAS sensor tower into place. The next step will be a floor height measurement. It is critical during this step not to block the lasers. You will see them flash and take a measurement of the floor. Now we're ready to place the tower. During this step, we will release the brakes on the tower and roll back towards the red dots. What we want to achieve is the red dots hitting both white reflectors on the base of the tower. Next, we're going to mount the left and right target board stored on the back of the Ultimate ADAS console. After the target boards have been mounted, we actually need to mount our target IDs. 
You notice on this one, it's displaying the target ID of 20. You'll see that target ID corresponds on the end here, and we'll go on the left board. Simply on clasp and roll the target down. Process now is to do target number 22 on the right board. Again, you'll see the corresponding number on the end of the target and displayed on the graphic on screen. You will notice on screen, as the correct targets are mounted, you will get a green check mark. After you've confirmed that you have the correct target IDs mounted, this is a great time to have your handheld remote in your hand. The next several steps can be done from this physical location with a handheld remote. Ultimate ADAS will adjust to the correct height. Next, we will make lateral adjustments with our target boards. Simply follow the on-screen graphic positioning the bar graph in the green. Once this is achieved, you'll get two green check marks and you can progress to the right target. Again, follow the on-screen graphic. Getting the bar graph with two green check marks. And if you overshoot, you can always go back. Continue on. You may see a slight orientation here where we square everything up to the car. Once the target orientation is complete, go to your scan tool and complete the calibration. In this video, we're going to do a flat plate radar placement procedure. Let's navigate down to that flat plate and begin the procedure. Again, as usual, we'll start with that home position. Always follow the on-screen instructions and graphics to ensure that you're in the proper location. You'll know this because the targets will go green on the wheels. We'll get the next or K4 green. We'll go ahead and verify that we have enough clear space in front of the vehicle to complete the calibration. This will be indicated by green laser lines and red laser dots. Look at the graphic on the screen, which will help connect the dots and make a box. Now we'll check for clear space for the actual target tower. The sensor tower will rise up and point two red lasers on the floor where the tower will be positioned. During floor height clear space check, there could potentially be an obstruction where the dots cannot hit the floor. In this example, you can see the dots are on the tower. Simply move the tower, once the system has gained vision of both targets on one axle, you'll get a green floor plane. At this point, you may advance in the procedure. During the floor height measurement, you will notice both dots are going to blink. This is a floor measurement. Do not block those red dot lasers during this step. After the floor height measurement has been taken, align the red dots on the floor with the white laser reflectors and the base of the ultimate ADAS tower. When you have achieved the red laser in one of those reflectors, simply release the brake on the side that you have achieved the dot in the reflector and pivot the other side in until the reflector is illuminated by the laser and release the brake. Now we're ready to mount the flat plate. Note that I've already pushed the carriages together to mount the flat plate. Once the flat plate is mounted, you'll notice that on the graphic, you will get a green check mark. This is another great time to use that handheld remote. We can go ahead and hit next. Height will automatically adjust. Again, with that handheld remote, I'll be able to advance to a lateral adjustment. 
Simply follow that on-screen graphic, moving the flat plate to the right until my bar graph gives me green check marks. Once I get those green check marks, I'll continue to next. We'll get a slight adjustment, if any. And now we're ready to use the scan tool to complete the calibration. We're going to go through a surround view mat placement procedure. Let's go ahead and navigate down to that surround view mat placement. Once we're there, we'll go start calibration procedure with K4. Next, we'll go to the home position. Always follow the on-screen instructions and graphics to ensure that you're in the proper location. You'll know this because the targets will go green on the wheels. Once we have both targets on an axle, we can proceed. Your next button will go green as well. We'll choose K4 to continue. Ultimate 8S sensor tower will go ahead and rise to its maximum position. Again, reacquiring those wheel targets so that we have both targets on an axle. Once this happens, we're going to take 12 different floor height measurements around the vehicle. It may be necessary to move the sensor tower towards the vehicle or away from the vehicle to make these 12 measurements. And at times during the placement procedures, you also may need to move the sensor tower. And this is okay, it is normal. We're on five, seven, nine, and finally we will be at 12 of 12 and we'll be able to start the mat placement procedure. What we'll need for the mat placement procedure will be a barcode scanner that we can scan in the appropriate target. We see we'll start with target number 313. Once we have that placed, we'll shoot that barcode on the bottom of the target with our barcode scanner, and it'll progress us around the vehicle, placing all the mats for the surround view. Let's go ahead and get started. To place the mats, simply follow the on-screen graphics and written instructions. In the rear, we're going to have two red dots, and we're gonna simply line the red dot up with the circle and the parallel lines. Bring the mat into position. Once placement is achieved, scanning the barcode will advance the procedure. For our next placement, we'll simply be placing the green laser through the circle and the parallel lines, keeping the mat in line with the previously laid mat. Again, scanning the barcode on this will advance the procedure. Line up the next mat, just as you did the first. Again, scan that barcode to advance the procedure. Moving through the procedure, the next placement will have a red laser. The red laser dot will line up with the circle, and then the green laser line will go through the parallel lines. Continuing with the right front placement, and scanning to advance. You may encounter situations where you need to move Ultimate 8S sensor tower. Here's a great example. As you can see, there is an interference here with the width of the front mat placement to sensor tower. Simply move the sensor tower back and allow it to reacquire targets. The remaining placements will mirror what we've already done in the rear and on the passenger side. Continue following the on-screen instructions and advancing by scanning the barcodes. Once all mat placements have been achieved, simply follow service instructions to complete the calibration, press finish, and send the results to HunterNet.